all the poppies. Um, so the objects look like this. Here's a boat. Will did this. So, so the objects are defined sort of in this way. So no matter what solution, I, I want this to be something that we can write a Java solution for. Where's my mouse thing? A Java solution for, a Java, or a JavaScript solution, and even a Python solution. So I don't want to restrict this and say, oh, you have to use this HTM implementation. Um, <laughs> what did I miss? I missed something from Lewis. Oh, this is Lewis's son. Ah, well, thanks for the follow anyway. <laughs> See, I'm getting all the kids. Not, I, I'm sure that my average age of my audience on Twitch is 10 years. Um, <laughs> lower than on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yeah, this is what your, your dad's helped me work on. Your dad's a really um, excellent engineer. I just want to tell you he's super valuable to our company. Um, you should be proud of him. Uh, anyway, so our objects are going to look like this. We can have as many features as we want. And uh, we want to, where was I? Yeah, so we want to create some type of test definition that, um, oh, oh, each one of these uh, different libraries that we create, I'm gonna probably work on one in JavaScript, and I, I, honestly, I'll probably use Paul Lamb's HTM implementation to do it, or we could do one in Python, and we could try and use um, NuPic uh, CPP, or the Community Fork implementation, because it has to be Python 3, um, or we could do it in Java and use HTM Java. So, so you could use any one of those. Um, so I want it to be, and a, a way for different people to try and program an HTM solution in different environments. So if even if you don't want to program your own HTM, there's one in Java already. Um, there's one in Python 2 already. In Python 3, we're going to have a little work on it. We're going to have to work on it. But there's also one in JavaScript that you could use. And any of those, I would, I would hope, would be able to um, solve this object recognition problem that I'm going to define. Um, so like the first type of things I'm going to do is describe um, sometimes how the objects get loaded because we want to have some object that makes the object library that exposes an API for the object library so that agents can then be given you know the object within the same within the, uh, a standard with a standard API right we want to create something that loads and presents the object to the competitors, and then we're going to have to define what agency is, what an agent is, and how it interacts with objects. And then we can define basically the tests, right? Which is when object A, let's so say like after training on each object, however we define that training. Maybe maybe the training we restrict it and say you get, um, you can create your movements any way you want, but you only get a thousand touches. You know, we could that could be one of the scenarios. Given that you've touched each object in the library a thousand times, and, and you now the competitor now has to write the code that does that, you know, ha that has a strategy for somehow learning the objects with touch. Um, given that you've done this, let's move on to the next phase. New, uh, given that like the, the scenario is there's a new object in the space that uh, the agent doesn't know about, given one touch or how X touches, what does the assert that the agent identifies the object properly? So, that, so those are the kind of tests that I want to define in this really generic language agnostic manner. Because if I can do that, if I can define a set of tests in, in for JavaScript, for example, the same set of tests can be run against the Java or the Python uh, agents.